is a 1954 Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Gullwing. This car matters because it was the first Mercedes-Benz Gullwing ever delivered to a customer. And it wasn't just any customer. The customer was the very famous sportsman, Briggs Cunningham. Briggs Cunningham, avid sportsman, race car driver from the 50s, was one of the best customers of Max Hoffman. Max Hoffman was a distributor in New York, and he wanted to introduce the Mercedes-Benz Gullwing to the world by having a celebrity driver be the first person to get this car. Max Hoffman was responsible for the import of many cars into the United States in the 1950s. He launched many brands that were unknown prior to that date. In discussions with the Daimler-Benz board, he convinced the board that he could sell a production version of the 1952 300SL race car. Had it not been for Max Hoffman, his vision and his commitment to sell those cars, and seeing the opportunity in the U.S. market, the car would not have been made. Mercedes-Benz made the Gullwing originally just to show the world what they were capable of doing, never believing that they would actually sell the car in production and that somebody would, would buy it. The 300SL was launched to the public at the 1954 International Motorsports Show in New York. It is a significant moment as it launches the SL brand within the Mercedes-Benz family. It's the greatest car and I love it and most people that have them love them but it is as impractical as you'd ever want it to be. As you see what it takes to get in and out of this car, it's, it's quite a chore. You have to first sit over here, or lift one leg over, and then lift the other leg over. So you, you wouldn't exactly take this car to a grocery store to go shopping. But driving it, it feels great, it looks great, it performs exceptionally well, and uh, they're just a joy. This particular Gullwing was the first car delivered, although the production number is number three. The 300SL number three is significant because it is the first car that landed in the hands of a consumer, in this case, Briggs Cunningham. Cars one and two were kept by the factory and were only released about a month and a half later. The very fact that it is the first car to leave the production line makes the car extremely significant. For Daimler-Benz in the 1950s, it was absolutely important to get back into a leading position in the marketplace. If you look back into the history of the brand, racing always played an important role. The tube frame chassis of the 1954 300SL is a derivative of the 1952 race car chassis. It is lightweight in construction and it is the reason why the car has its trademark gullwing doors. You could not mount a conventional door on that car because of the box frame nature of the tube frame. So it became a necessity to have these gullwing doors on the car to gain exit and entrance to the car. Along with the purchase came the original hand-typed manual for this car. In the manual, they talk about these doors, not very flattering, but they call them trap doors, which is very interesting. The name Gullwing just evolved from the public because it looked like a Gullwing. The term Gullwing was popularized in the press. It was never an official name, so we know the car as a 300 SL coupe. To this day, Mercedes-Benz does not address this car as a, as a Gullwing, yet the rest of the world does. The 300SL, when it was introduced in 1954, was a technological marvel. It featured a lightweight tube frame chassis and it had fuel injection, mechanical direct injection, which is something that is significant in that it was the very first car ever to have fuel injection. Good morning, good morning. It looks fabulous. This is such a great car to own. No matter where I go, people stop and ask about it. and they just think it's, wow, what a story. I didn't just find a Mercedes Gullwing, I found the Mercedes Gullwing. We do consider this car to be a production car, but in early production, production methods were still being sorted out. Many of the parts in this car are hand-tooled and are different than later production cars. Hans tells me that these doors would never fit on any other Gullwing. They specifically fit on this car because the car was, in fact, a handmade car. If we look into the engine compartment on the car, we notice that many of the components are made of magnesium. Later cars feature aluminum components, so it is significant in that the early cars featured a more rare material in the production. Driving this car is a thrill. I think a lot of it is just knowing how important it is, knowing the history of it, but also the fact that it's a fresh restoration and done by such a qualified uh, restorer. Everything works on this car, I mean, including the heater, which is a little bit too hot, but it works. The 300SL played an important role in the United States. It's important to demonstrate that this car really showed the best of what Mercedes-Benz can offer. There are many important cars in our history, but a 300SL is perhaps our most iconic car. It is Mercedes-Benz.
I've actually owned other Gull Wings in the past and they're great, but this car had a provenance like no other that I've ever, ever owned of any type, let alone a Mercedes-Benz Gull Wing. I'm Dennis Nicotra and this car matters.